Hi, Chris Delion here with Gam Keto, and today I wanted to show a real simple effect that you can use in Unity to help give some more depth uh, and life to the air around you and the games you're working on. This is an effect I first noticed, as you see here, from Resident Evil 4. Uh, just to cite my source here, it appears that Roger Yabara maybe uploaded a video that IGN.com made, recording, of course, Capcom's game art intellectual property, so it goes. Internet's a weird time and weird place to try to cite sources, but so here's Resident Evil 4, and if you watch closely, look at the air around him. And you'll see that uh, as the character runs through the air, passes sort of clouds of dust, helps sort of you can tell when their camera reorients, pardon the violence, my apologies, but this is kind of one of the better examples of it. And again, like it's it's subtle, but there's little bitty bitty motions around him. Uh, and when he moves, you can see him passing through the dust clouds. And that's the same thing I want to show you how to do in Unity, where, uh, so this is Clever Girl. It's a project that Tim Waskett's been leading over in... Uh, our hobby game dev on Reddit, which is it's actually the, one of our three projects this season. We finished five games before this season. We finished one Shader Soccer already. Uh, Zombar's on the way, and uh, this one's also got another couple weeks left, maybe. Uh, but so the way this works, right now I'm just going to have it turned off at first, and I'm going to show you what the opening sequence looks like without it, and then just show you briefly how gameplay looks without it, and then we'll compare the two, and then I'll walk you through what it is, how I'm doing it. It's really not as fancy as it sounds. So here's the opening sequence for Clever Girl without the effects. Just because I want to show, like, it, you know, it still looks good without it. And part, if you'll pardon the frame rate, of course, I'm doing video capture on top of running a high-resolution game. Okay, and you see I have fog already, so that fog isn't what I'm talking about. They told me that time travel was safe. And to be fair to them, I'd undertaken dozens of research flights that had all ended perfectly uneventfully. But not this time. I'm gonna go and skip to the end and show you. So in, here is in gameplay, you can see very clear air sort of very still, right? So the ground and the trees, just very static look whenever you're not moving. And that's what this effect attempts to correct for or improve. And all it is is a single check mark I'll turn on. Should see us kind of moving through the air. You'll see some sort of dust clouds in our face as we pan past them. And it's it's subtle, so I mean you might even need to turn on to the click the gear down bottom HD, you know, full screen this to even see the difference. They told me that time travel was safe. And to be fair to them, I'd undertaken dozens of research flights that had all ended perfectly uneventfully. But not this time. Something had gone horribly wrong. The normally smooth transition had become very violent indeed, and I crashed in prehistoric times. Gonna yeah, skip to the gameplay. And so it's still active here, and if you just watch closely, you'll see that the whole screen isn't sitting quite as still as it was. We have some subtle grays, some subtle lights and darks kind of pulsing in and out. But it's a very subtle effect. You don't want it too noticeable. And all there is to it, a single particle effect in the scene. Right there's our camera's viewing box. For, and so the, for the intro, of course, steers this camera around. And then right in front of it, I've just created a single particle emitter. Let's see, sort of a, just an emission shape around it. Here's the shape. There's our sphere. And so this space, it's hard to see, but it is having lots of lots of lots of particles just spawning, disappearing. Uh, I'm using color over lifetime to make them sort of go from zero transparency slowly up to about 30% transparency. If I turn these numbers up, you'll see them way more obvious. Hear what's going on when I make them darker. But so I have it go from zero up to just a low number like 30, still at 30, and then sort of recede back down. So it's, so there's no pop. You don't want them popping in and out on you. Um, I'm using the default particle material. Uh, I'm giving some random range to the size and to the lifetime. Uh, and you know, and, and those, those, that ability to use this thing with random between two constants, you kind of always want to use it with particles because you don't want everything in fixed numbers. And then this is just attached to my camera as a child of it. So whenever, wherever the camera goes, these particles keep spawning in front of it. Uh, these are set to world space as opposed to local. That's important so when the camera's moving, you see them left behind. And then of course, sphere and radius is the emitter size. Uh, random direction was handy to make sure they'd have subtle drift and different pointing to different directions, otherwise they'll move away from the center of the circle. But yeah, so if I leave up this alpha and I press play, then you'll better see what I mean by the fact that it's using world coordinates instead of local. And this avoids you having to spawn dust all over the world, because of course you don't want to do that. That's this spread too thin, too much stuff going on. There we go. Now of course it's very, you don't want to do this, but you can see how this is emphasizing the motion of the camera 
when they sort of form in front of us, we move through it. And when it's subtle, it kind of works partly because at a distance you don't expect to see these kind of differences anyway. They kind of come out of the wash, that's part of why I've turned on the fog layer. They told me in that time travel settings. was safe. And to be fair to them, I don't... And then lastly for those uh, fog settings, I think a lot of y'all probably already know about this, but it's just over in uh, render settings. I chose to use linear fog, uh, 0 to 340. And there's just sort of uh, it's just something you tune based on your environment and view ranges and what you can see. Uh, one reason why we did that was off in the distance, I've got these pterodactyls that fly during the opening. And they are just cards. It's just a two-dimensional bitmap. And that fog helps it blend into the sky. You can see there it's much more subtle and it's going to be soaring over the mountains in front of us. So that's what I've been doing with Clever Girl. Uh, just working on some of the atmospherics lately, adjusting some of the global lightning. Uh, lighting, placing dinosaurs, some little touch up to the terrain. Uh, but this game should be ready soon for those of y'all interested in playing it. Uh, you can find out more about it at reddit.com uh, slash r slash hobby game dev, or soon enough, I'll post it in the game section at hobby game dev as soon as we have it done. Thanks. Bye bye.